Aloha, this is Frank. I've been attending the Woodstock Food Festival for the past couple of years. Um, I recently heard of the news that the Woodstock Food Festival is having a scholarship discount slash credit offered to people who plant a fruit tree in the name of Dr. Robert Lockhart. And so um, I personally was super excited to hear this news. I think it, it fits, it feels so good to plant fruit trees. Being outdoors in nature, you're exposed to the sunlight, you are outside, you're you know grounding to the earth, you're in all the elements. And I think it's great, it's a great way, not only just for the environment, but also for your health. So without further ado, let's get started. I got a Raposa mango tree here, really, really tall one, about three to four feet. Uh, it's a grafted mango tree that we're gonna get planted up here. So we'll take this up here and we'll get started. Cool. taking this opportunity to show you guys how to plant a fruit tree. One of the requirements is that it has to be over two feet tall from the ground up. So this is about four feet, just about four feet. And we'll be showing you and going, going over all the requirements to plant a fruit tree successfully so it can flourish. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing you wanna do is, is well, specifically, Every fruit tree has its own environment that it adapts to, right? So mango trees like the drier climates, citrus trees like uh, wetter climates and, and so on. So you would have to do some research with the fruit tree that you buy in the climate or the place that you're going to plant it in. That will be number one. Okay, so and make sure that the tree is above two feet tall. So once you got your tree, once you have um, the place where you're going to plant it in, now you have to establish your hole. So let's go ahead and go over some of that digging process here. Here we have a space. If you look above, there's you know blue skies around us. We're gonna get sun exposure. So you want to dig a hole that's about double the size of the pot. So I'm gonna eye it out and use a pickaxe and a and a shovel to dig out some of the dirt and rock. Loosen it up with the pickaxe and I'm in the dirt with the shovel. I find this way to be the easiest for me. Well, we went over the requirements of having a, at least a two feet tall fruiting tree checked. Now another requirement is to identify the quality of soil that you have here. A lot of soil can either be very acidic or dry, it can be like this clay-like material. No matter how much you wet it, it's not going to produce. The, the roots will not um, grow and develop in that kind of climate. So the reason why I dug a hole that's about two times, maybe even three times bigger than the actual pot itself is to make room for compost soil. We're going to dump this entire bag. Now this stuff you can get for like under $10 at a hardware store. And what we do is we just mix it in with the native soil. Getting pretty sweaty and hot here. That's not the clean job, but it's definitely some rewarding thing to do, I think. And this is one of the more delicate things now where you're taking the pot or you're taking the tree out of the pot. Um, I like to moisten my soil before removing it. Hitting it a bit on the sides, loosen up the plastic with the roots. Get a good grip on the, on the trunk, give it a little pull. It goes, it goes into the earth. You can send your thoughts, your intentions. You can acknowledge Dr. Robert Lockhart within this tree. Was such a pioneer in the movement of, of the fruitarian diet and it lives in this tree because he would have loved for us to plant more trees and so I think it'd be something very special. I think it is very something very special that we're doing here. So you go ahead and acknowledge Robert Lockhart. We start filling in the holes with some of that native soil and a mix of our compost soil. Look how just fresh and, and amazing that is.
I like to do is to step around it and like to compact the soil. And ta-da, there my friends, you have a mango tree that could pretty much fruit in one to two years depending on how much you take care of it. Another thing that I haven't gone over in the video is that we would want to uh, have you verify the, the care for the tree. Um, so we do ask for a video that from the day of planting, two weeks from the day of planting, a, a update on the tree to see that it's producing new leaves, new buds, it's expanding its 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 trunk, its its stems, and uh, and everything like that. And then once that's approved and verified that it has been taken care of, then you'll be awarded two hundred dollars uh, in credit to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Um, I'm going to be running some irrigation line around here. It's not required for everyone to do it. This is a super super dry climate, especially in the summer months. So I'm going to go ahead and and run some irrigation and then do some mulch over it. And then that's the plan. And then we have a fruiting mango tree in a year or two. So yeah, hope to see you at the fruit festival. Running irrigation to trees is optional. The only reason that I am running irrigation to this tree here is because we have lots of fruit trees and so it just makes it more effective to run uh, irrigation to the trees here than uh, me individually watering them with a hose. So you can see the irrigation that we kind of have set up. I'm going to let the water run here for a bit and then we're going to cover this up with some mulch and wood chips. Okay, so we finished running our irrigation and now we brought some wood chips up, some mulch and wood chips that we use this to retain the moisture. It holds down and locks down the moisture in the roots. It uh, creates a barrier between the sun and the roots. And we want to let the trunk breathe. It's very important you don't choke the trunk. There you go, you got one happy mango tree. We're hoping to eat fruit off this proposal tree within one year. And ta-da, that's how you do it. <laughs>